All right, I want to take a minute and just talk a little bit about Newton's law of gravity. Because this is just like so incredibly important, and um, to see how it connects is is really not obvious. Like why it's why it's so important. So there's a simulation in the background here. I'll show you that in just a minute. But first, I just want to start with this equation, right? And and many students find this equation to be one of the most challenging in the class uh, in terms of actually doing calculations. So I, I do want to just like help with that a little bit. But I also want to give some context for like why this is just so in, insanely important. So um, first of all, let's just talk about why this is important. The reason this law of gravity is so important is uh, it, it connects the Earth and life on the Earth to everything that's happening in outer space. So this one equation can be used to describe and calculate um, the the force on an apple. So here's my like proverbial apple, okay, sitting on a scale, okay, right here. And there's some force of gravity acting on this apple, right? That's pointed straight down. And that's what we measure when we look at a scale. And I can use this equation to, to calculate that, right? Let's just say, and this is, I'm going to do it because it's so in, insane. Okay, so... Um, let's just say the mass of this apple is like one kilogram, okay? And um, to do this, I would need to know that, but I would also need to know the mass of the earth because what we're talking about is a force, a real force between this apple and the earth itself. So uh, I'm going to pull up the equation sheet because that has the mass of the earth on it. And um, that is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 uh, kilograms. Right, so these insane numbers. That's what I love about this equation is you get these insane numbers. 5.97 times 10 to the 24. Again, I'm pulling that right off our equation sheet. And uh, also this value G, this gravitational constant, that's also on our equation sheet. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And all these units afterwards, I won't even write those down. And then the distance, you have to ask yourself, well, what's the distance between an apple sitting on the surface of the earth and, uh, and the Earth itself. Well, you might be tempted to say, well, there is no distance. It's like sitting right on the Earth, so the distance is like zero. But the distance we always use when we're doing these kind of problems is between the center of mass. So the distance we would use is from the center of the apple all the way down to the center of the Earth. So that distance from the center of the Earth to the center of this apple would be the radius of the Earth, right? That's just straight up to the, how big the Earth is, right? Here's the whole Earth going all the way around. That's the radius of the Earth. So that's also given on our equation sheet, 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. Now you have like this insane um, stuff, these big numbers of scientific notation. And what we're all trying to find out is, well, what is the force acting on uh, this apple, which is measured in newtons and that's really the metric units for weight how much does this apple weigh now here's what's kind of gets gets students kind of tripped up right with these with these problems and um, you're going to see this with any problem you try to solve using newton's law of gravity is that when you have all i'm just clearing up some space when you have these huge numbers in scientific notation it can be confusing like how do i type this into a calculator so first i'm going to show you how to write it and where you should put parentheses. And then I'll give you my best tip for how to, how to calculate it. So to do this calculation, parentheses are your friend. Okay, so the force, every single one of these values, I'm gonna effectively just put parentheses around them so that I don't end up getting myself mixed up with all the scientific notation. So if I'm typing this in a calculator, I'm literally gonna type parentheses 6.67 times 10. And I use the button, right? Uh, either the caret button or like the, right? The caret button or the um, X to the Y, right? For raising it to the power of negative 11. Close the parentheses and now I'm doing the big mass. Uh, so mass of the earth 5.97 times 10 to the 24 and now the little mass one <laughs> that's right you just put one for one kilogram and now down here i might even double up my parentheses 
um, because I want to make sure I'm keeping this squared, this little squared right here. I want to make sure I'm keeping that in the denominator. So sometimes I'll even use two sets of parentheses. And for my distance here, and you'll see why here, 6.37 times 10 to the 6, right? And then now I close that one parentheses and then squared. And I sometimes close that. Just again, I'm using that extra parentheses to say, no, this stays down here. Now, on a, um, I, I can actually go to Google and type this right in to the to the Google. Let me try to show you that a second. Um, I think that is <clears throat> useful. Okay, I'll see if I can bring the recording tab. Sorry. Um, you know, what? I'll do it like this. Sorry. Thanks for holding with me. Google.com. So you can do that on a calculator, but uh, to be honest with you, I would just do it right on, on Google because you can type it all right in. I can do 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 parentheses, right? And now I do the mass of the earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24 parentheses. See, I'm using those parentheses just to block things up. And then um, one kilogram, and then divided by, and I'll do my double parenthesis trick. Uh, radius here is six point three seven times ten to the six parentheses squared parentheses. Now I just typed all that in at once, and when I do that on Google, it's going to pop up the calculator, and it will give me the answer: nine point eight newtons, right? And that's that's what I'm looking at: nine point eight newtons. So um, kind of insane that you do all that calculation and you end up with a relatively simple answer, 9.8 Newtons. But I, I do want to show you that crazy math, okay? Because you're going to do some example problems kind of like that. Now, here's what's so amazing about all this, okay? That equation, and I'm going to write it down one more time because it um, is this is the really surprising part. Okay, so the math I want you to see because, like, I want you to know this is an inherently mathematical relationship, right? So you're going to do a couple problems like that. But what I want you to see is this equation. If you take only this, and really what this is saying is that the force of gravity, how hard you're pulling on something, it depends on how much the two things weigh, right? So this is a mutual gravity. The force is pulling between these two masses. And these can be any two masses. It could be two people. It could be a star and a planet. It could be two galaxies, any two things. The force of that gravity is going to depend on those masses being multiplied together, divided it by the distance between them squared. So if I have one person standing here, right, and I have another person right here, they're going to have some gravity pulling between them. Now, it's so insanely small for things that are small mass that we never even feel it, but it can be measured even when it's between two people. But now if I move a person further away, the gravity between person one and person two here is going to be much, much less. Like let's say I'm three times further away, right? Three times further away. Well, that gravity, because it's a distance squared, the gravity is going to be um, nine times weaker, right? It's three squared weaker. So the point here is that it really depends on how close two things are. Now, here's what's so awesome. If you take just that equation and you turn it into a simulation, okay? And I've done this before, and I'm about to show you one. If you take just that equation, you say, okay, let's just say I have a mass, all right? And I'm going to make one right here. Um, here's a mass, okay? And I'm going to have it be a pretty big mass. Okay, and so there's my first mass, capital M. And now, uh, if you this simulation is just programmed with this equation. That's all that's programmed in here. And if I were to now add a second small mass, and I give it some little velocity, um, boop, 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 there it goes. Right, you see that? Um, it's orbiting around it. Now, this, this simulation is not programmed with Kepler's laws, or orbits, or anything. All it is programmed with is Newton's law of gravity, this equation that you're seeing right up here. The entire program, obviously, it has animation and stuff built in, but the physics of this 
simulation is just that equation. That's it. And you see that equation, when you have a force that is uh, described this way, it causes things to orbit each other. And I'm gonna throw some, I'm gonna throw some more out here. Boom. Oh, come on, what's it doing? Boom. There's another one. There's another one. <laughs> okay. And now look, they're actually starting to merge with each other. So that's built in is that if two of these things hit each other, they'll merge. But now look, you see, whoa, you see how that that bigger planet thing actually pulled on the other uh, smaller one? Again, this whole thing is programmed with just this one simple equation. And yet it gives rise to, oh, there goes some small ones. Oh, check it out. Um, it gives rise to all of these complex orbital motions. So this is why Newton's law is just so insanely important, okay? Is that um, that one equation is the ultimate uh, physics behind all of the orbits that we see everywhere. Now, here's one more thing that's really, that's really kind of cool about this whole thing. Um, and that is that if I have, uh, because I have Newton's law, and because I have, here, I'm going to get just a little something going here. And because I have Kepler's law, right? Remember Kepler's law we just saw uh, a little bit ago, P squared equals A cubed. All right. Now remember that A cubed is like the distance, right? So here's a little thing orbiting. There's roughly, roughly what A is, okay? The semi-major axis. Now that distance is also pretty much close to what R is, right? The distance between these two masses. So you can actually connect these two equations to each other. Now we aren't gonna do any math like that, but I just want you to see, this is like hugely important because what it means is that, right? So you see A and R are kind of the same thing, right? The force between these two, these, the star and this planet depends on the distance. And the other thing that depends on the distance is, is how long it takes to go around. So if you can measure P, the orbital period, orbital period, and that's actually pretty easy to measure in outer space. If you can measure that, then you can get A, right? The semi-major axis. And if you can get A, you've got R. And if you can get R, you can say something about the masses of these things. So this is a little confusing. I'm not expecting you to be able to like follow the math. I just want you to be able to see like connect the dots here that if I can measure um, like how long it takes some things to orbit each other in outer space, it actually can tell me about how massive those objects are. So this is, this is like one of those um, amazing connections in physics and astronomy where we can learn something you would think we never could have learned, like how much something weighs, like how massive it is. We can learn that simply by taking a stopwatch and measuring how long one thing takes to orbit the other. All right, again, I'm not gonna ask you, I, I will ask you to do some simple equations with, uh, with, with Newton's law. I won't ask you to do like the relationship between these, but I hope you can see that like, this amazing thing that a stopwatch right? Measuring time of an orbital period can actually tell us something about how much something weighs. Okay, super cool.